You see, one of the greatest tricks, my God, we're going in another direction today. One of the greatest tricks of the enemy is to make you defeat you. Love is love. Love is love. I do know. In the Bible, we often talk about positive things said to others. We at times talk about negative things said to others, but rarely do we talk about the positive and negative thing people say to themselves in the Word of God. This morning, we're going to look at a story in the New Testament and, and share with you just how this does this person use the power of positive self-talk to invoke Jesus to move on their behalf? But before, before talking about that, I'd like to talk about something you can do today that will absolutely positively turn your life around. Something that will strengthen your marriage, Make you make you look more appealing to your boss when it's time to get that promotion. Something that can literally, not figuratively, but literally slow your your physical heartbeat and, and lower your cholesterol and your blood pressure. Do I have your attention? I bet I do. You see, the reason I'm starting this way this morning is because I'm speaking to you. And as I'm speaking to you, there is some, 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 some background noise that is, that is interfering with what you're hearing me say this morning. No, it's not on my end. It's, 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 it's in your mind. You see, you got up this morning, maybe had your cup of coffee, possibly grabbed a Danish or something to eat for breakfast, and, and then you got on the call. And, and now that you're on the call, what has happened? Background noise. Background noise. You see, as I'm sharing with you, you're already thinking about the deal. After all, the day is the 13th. The car news notice due on the 14th. Thinking about traffic patterns to work. You're thinking about the clothes you're wearing or what you're gonna wear. What you're gonna have for lunch. My friends, all of this is bitter. Uh, background noise to distract you from receiving the word of God. You see, I did. At times our lives can be so busy that we find ourselves just putting our thoughts on autopilot and going about our day without noticing what's traveling through our mind. But if you could just learn how to how to manipulate your mind, Notice I didn't say control because controlling the mind would take some time. But, but if today you could simply discover how to manipulate your mind, you will start to find freedom and peace from things that have been, that have been, that have been blocking your blessings for years. If you could learn to, to manipulate your thoughts, you will recognize damaging words trying to infiltrate your subconscious and, and stop them from taking root like a bitter weed in your life. If you could just discover how to manipulate your mind, you will understand the power of patience. Not, not patience with the kids, not not with your spouse or your friend, you you would understand how important it is to be to be to be patient with you when you do not hit the mark, when you fall short, when you make mistakes in your life. So let me jump flat foot into this. The first step you must do to uh, is to understand negative self talk is to simply tune in and stop paying attention to your thoughts. You see, if I, if I open this call this morning by cursing you, 
I'm sure 99% of you and most likely 100% of you would never call in again. And I wouldn't blame you. It's offensive to have someone curse you. We don't stand for it, right? Well, if it's so offensive, then why in the world do you curse you? I'm not talking about necessarily using curse words in your self-talk, but by saying damaging things that curse your life. I can't do this. I'll never do this. That's what I deserve. This is what I get. I guess this is how my life's gonna be. The devil is a liar. You must, you must, you must catch these words as soon as they come into your heart and, and immediately start challenging them. And a way to challenge them is by simply saying, says who? That's right. It's not that deep, it's not that profound, but just say, says who? You'll never get married, says who? You'll never own a home, says who? You'll always be sick, says who? You'll never lose weight, you'll never be trusted, you're too ugly, you're too short, you're too tall. Who in the world says that, says who? You see, my Bible says I am a crown of beauty in the hands of the Lord. That's what God says. My Bible says I am filled with joy because Christ is my strength. That's what my Bible says. My Bible says I am a doctor. I am a child of a king. That's what God says about me. You see, one of the greatest tricks, my God, we're going in another direction today. One of the greatest tricks of the enemy is to make you defeat you. Do you realize that God said to Abraham, cursed are those that will curse you? In other words, here you go. When it comes to others, God will fight your battle for you. But when you curse you, God will do nothing. God will not stop you from cursing you. Why? free will free will and the way the enemy will present this 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 negative talk to you at times it's hard to decipher he he will send it as logic i mean after all it makes sense heck eating the fruit from the tree made sense to eat he could present it to appear to be a rational decision well, I didn't do well, but but I'm just not good at math. I ain't gonna try to do it no more. That's a trick of the enemy. Or the sign outright cruel when he said to you, I can never do anything right. I'm so stupid, I'm so dumb, I'm so... Again, this is a trick of the enemy, y'all. Oh, get this, mm, thank you, Holy Ghost. He can make, it, make you make a declaration that come from your soul against your life. I knew they were gonna fire me. He could make you lose before you ever begin. But God has sent me here this morning with a Holy Ghost assignment for one reason, thank you God. For one reason, thank you Holy Ghost. For one reason and one reason only, to encourage you, to encourage yourself. Come here, David. Sometimes you've got to encourage yourself, to encourage you to, to monitor that crap that's going on between your ears and remind you that God is. I'm going to stop right there. God is. That God is. That God is. In the gospel, we see this particular woman. Thank you, Holy Ghost. This particular woman who had been sick, for 12 years. She had been sick for 12 years, y'all. Now, 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 can you imagine how others perceived her? What she must have looked like bleeding for 12 years in that hot climate, bleeding day in and day out, 12 years nonstop. You see, there was no easy cure for what ailed this woman. Have you ever been in a situation where there seems to be no easy solution for what you were dealing with? This is what this woman was facing. 
In fact, she tried, y'all. The Bible tells us she spent everything. She spent her savings. She spent her retirement. She cashed in her 401k. She cashed in her IRA. The kids' college money was gone. Everything she had was spent on dollars. And get this, she was getting worse. My God. But as I shared with you last night, last week, sometimes God will allow you to give everything you got just so you can clearly understand that he is everything you need. My God, if I say nothing else to you this morning, I said all you need to hear. Sometimes God will allow you to give everything you got just so you can clearly understand he's everything you need. I don't know if she would have gotten healed if she had money. Don't know if she would have even tried to get close to Jesus if she was in good health. We don't know the answer to this question, but what we do know to be true is this right here, right here. That there is a mob of people standing around the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And as this mob grew, this woman comes up behind him. And as she reached for him, she rebukes doubt. She rebukes fear. She rebukes anything in her mind that will blocking her from being made whole by saying, if I might just touch the hem of his garment. That's self-talk, y'all. And I believe that was her mantra. If I might just touch the hem of his garment. If I might just touch the hem of his garment. For I believe when she got out of bed that morning, possibly soaked with blood, she was singing, if I might just touch the hem of his garment. As she saw the people gather around Jesus in the distance, she was saying, if I might just touch the hem of his garment. And as she decided to break the rules of conventional thought, she was saying, if I might just touch the hem of his garment. And then she touched him in everything. changes. I mean, everything changes. For Jesus, the Son of God, stops and says, who touched me? Believe, believers, believe this to be true. The devil will appeal to your logic. You're too old. You're too this. You're too fat. You're too skinny. He'll try to distract you. Why is he trying to distract you? Because he don't want you to realize the power you have in your words to get the attention of God. And that's when you are reminded. You remind that devil of exactly who you are. That you have the capacity to make God himself say, Who touched me? My God, who touched me? Who touched me? Who touched me? You have the ability to change your destiny. By using the words from your mouth. Don't you ever let the enemy tell you that you can't do something. You are the head and not the tail. You are above and not the leap beneath. You have within you the ability to lead nations. You have the ability within you to cast out demons and tread on scorpions. You are the child of God. You are wonderfully and beautifully made. For within you is the capacity to stop God in his tracks and make him say, who touched me? On this day, monitor those thoughts, those thoughts, those thoughts the devil is trying to put inside your head and just continue to say to yourself, if I might just touch the hem of his garment, if I might just touch the hem of his garment, if I might just touch the hem of his garment. And when you connect with God, just like the woman in the Bible, you too will be made whole with nothing missing and nothing broken. Beloved, thank you for spending 15 minutes with God. Let me pray with you. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for coming through one more time and revealing yourself to your children. Allow your children to stay the hand of the enemy 
was trying to distract them with his bitter, twisted lies and let them understand like that poet Maya Angelou said, though he may try to twist them with his bitter, twisted lies, like the dust of the earth, they shall rise, they shall rise, they shall rise and exceed beyond anything they thought of, dreamed of, or imagined. And when they do, let them give you the praise. <laughs> let them give you the glory. And let them give you, dear God, the adoration that only you deserve. For you are our God. You are our King. And you are our Redeemer. In your Son, Jesus, naturalist name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Hey, thank you so very much for watching. Now that you have, Click the tab below for another inspiring video from First Day Christian Center and spend 15 minutes with God. Be blessed. Bye-bye. <laughs>